morning, church. It's Tuesday morning and time for a moment in the Word of God. Take your Bibles in 1 Thessalonians in chapter number 2. We're going to finish up that chapter. Beginning in verse number 17, the apostle says, But we, brethren, having been taken away from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavor more eagerly to see your face with great desire. He said, we had to leave Thessalonica, and they knew that. Again, Paul had to leave very quickly. It was probably agreed between Jason and the council that Paul needed to get out of town. And one of the things that uh, probably they had to do was Paul had to leave so there wouldn't be a, a ruckus or a riot. And so Paul had to leave. He didn't get to say goodbye to all the believers and didn't get to have all the fanfare. He just had to get out of town as quick as possible. And so he left. He said, but you need to know, even though I'm not there in presence as far as physically, I'm there in heart. What he's assuring them is of his love, his concern for them. Then he goes ahead and says, Therefore we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and again, but Satan has hindered us. Do you notice that Paul even uh, sometimes did not know exactly what God wanted for his life? Paul said, I, I try to come back. Uh, to Thessalonica on several occasions. I, I tried to come again and again because Paul knew there was fruit there and there was a church and people he loved and people he had led to the Lord. And he needed to come back and disciple them. He had heard that there had been some issues. And so he would love to have come back. He said, I tried, but Satan has hindered me. Now, it's not that Satan can overturn the, the will of God. Sometimes God allows Satan to hinder so that we go in a different direction. For what we find in Paul is Paul wanted to go back through that direction and he wanted to go elsewhere up into Asia, but God said no. What God wanted for him was to go deeper into Europe, to get to those larger cities, cities like Athens, cities like Corinth, cities like Ephesus. Uh, those would be places where Paul would spend much of his time, three years in one place, 18 months in another place. He'd spend a great deal of time. He wasn't long in, in Athens. Uh, but he was able to produce some fruit there in Athens. So God has a way of directing us. Sometimes God closes doors in our lives, even though that's what we desire and what we want, and we can blame it on Satan, and, and sometimes God uses Satan, such as in this situation, but it's really the will of God so that we go a different direction. So Paul says, I want to be with you guys, uh, but I can't. Uh, I tried to come time and again, but that's not, not worked out either. But notice what he says. He assures them of his love. For what is our hope, our joy, our crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For you are our glory and joy. This ends the second chapter. And remember, it always ends with a talking about the second coming of Jesus. He said, guys, listen, you're precious to us. You're our joy. You're our crown of rejoicing. Because when Jesus comes again and we have to stand in judgment before him, the only thing we have to offer are people like you, people we've led to the Lord. You are the fruit that is produced from the time we spent upon this earth. And so you're precious to us. And that's the way we ought to look at life, is we spend our life doing evangelism. And really, when it's all said and done, hopefully our kids will be with us and our grandkids will be with us in eternity. But really, it's it's the soul winner's crown that we're looking for. Those people who are going to be in heaven because God graciously used us and allowed, <clears throat> allowed us to share our faith with others that they might be saved. Again, and I know I say this often in our devotions, go forth and multiply. Go make disciples. Be a witness today. That is what God has called us to do. Let us pray together. Father, we pray for divine appointments today for people that will come into our lives that we can go about and share Christ with. Father, we want to be fruitful. I pray that you'll help us to find someone today that we can share our testimonies, that we can share about Jesus and how he died and rose again, that we might be able to declare the gospel. Help us to be fruitful while we're upon this earth. We'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.